guys know that I always try to keep the vlog upbeat, inspirational, everything like that, but you know, there's times that things go the other way, and, and it's always hard to want to share these moments with you, but at the same time, I feel like I have to, you know, if I'm not sharing it with you guys, I'm not being truthful, and uh, you know, I knew this day was coming over the last week or so, we've had uh, an animal that wasn't doing well, and an animal that's been here since the beginning of the Reptarium, I've had it for four years, it's, uh, it was an amazing animal, and, and you know, he was right here over the turtle pond and and although he didn't like people and he didn't come out a lot for whatever reason guac was like really took a nosedive about a week ago and and this morning unfortunately we came in and I actually found guac on the bottom of the enclosure right here and unfortunately guac didn't make it you know I'm gonna be totally honest with you I kind of knew this was gonna happen because about a week ago he just started to turn like a bad color and and um, stop eating now you know number one one, this was a wild caught Tanzanian Mellers chameleon. It was in the country for at least seven years before I got it, and I've had it for four years. He thrived up until a couple weeks ago. Like I said, a week ago in particular, he was doing so well. I mean, eating, looked great. You know, he's such a beautiful animal. Of course, you know, it's the second largest chameleon on the planet, and Glock was. He was super special, you know, I mean, it was when I was first getting into chameleons, he was one of my first chameleons. I got in Karma and then I got Guac and, and, and you know, it sucks, man. I mean, and, and I, like I said, I almost didn't want to tell you guys because, you know, I don't want to number one bum you guys out and, and, you know, it's just not a topic that I like to cover, you know, but it's at the same time, I want to always be honest with you guys and, and you know, it's going to be hard not to come in and see guac every day in this enclosure, you know. I mean, he's, he was such an impressive animal, and, and, and people loved him to death. I loved him to death and, and, and got to talk to people all the time about all the cool facts about the Mellers chameleons, and, and now we don't have them anymore. And, and that's the, the, the part of keeping animals and, and keeping any animal, but reptiles and running a zoo, that's the hardest part, you know. And, and I felt like if I didn't tell you guys that I'd be like kind of keeping it from you and I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be honest with you guys and I also don't want there to be a stigmatization on it, you know. I mean, the truth is guys, things pass away, you know. It sucks. It's it's so hard, you know, because we all fall in love with not just me, but the crew that works with them every day, they fall in love with these animals. And, and I know a week ago when all of a sudden he started to look bad, you know, everyone here was concerned and, and there was not much we could do. I mean, you know, what do you do? Chameleons are probably fragile there's no like it wasn't sick it wasn't it was just old I mean it, it, it again I know at least 11 years between the person that had it before me and the time I had it and Mellers can live like 20 years but you gotta remember it was an adult when it came into the country so who knows how old Glock was he could have been 25 years old for all we know and you know he was great and, and I loved him to death and 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 it's gonna suck and now I don't know exactly what we're gonna do about it and, and you know I, I, I want to get another big chameleon but it's not like you can just find them anywhere and it's not like we're gonna be able to replace Glock but you know guys I just again I didn't want to start the vlog in a bad note I didn't want to bring you guys down and, and I want to make you know the rest of the vlog upbeat you know back to inspiration and good things because there's so many amazing things that are happening around here and you know the longer I'm in in the zoo business, the more this is gonna happen. I mean, you know, 20 years from now, all these animals that are young here at the Reptarium are gonna be old and we're gonna go through it again, you know? And, and of course, some animals don't live as long. The panther chameleons are a seven, eight year old animal. Veil chameleons, three to five years. I mean, that's kind of part of the deal. And, you know, it just, I, I wish I could have done anything to change what happened, but I can't, you know? and. And I wanted to just tell you guys it because I know you guys love guac. It was such an impressive animal here, and and uh, we're gonna miss him so much. But uh, again, I, I'm sorry that I'm starting it, and I hope that I did. I hope I made the right decision by being honest with you guys. Let me know if you guys are okay with that. I, I want you to come along on the journey, the good, the bad, the ugly, and and but you know, listen, we got a ton of great things happening today. So I just wanted to get that out of the way, get that off my mind, and um, and just you know, move on with the day. But. Um, 
yeah, it sucks. And like I mentioned, I mean, this is all kind of part of just the journey of what we do. Take, for instance, Fetty Wap here. You know, he's probably two or three years past the life expectancy of what a bearded dragon can live. And, you know, he's looking a little rough. I'm not going to lie. He's been up at the BHB offices. We baby him. We feed him all kinds of different stuff to keep him going. But we know that he doesn't have that much more to go. You know, maybe we'll be lucky to get another six months or a year out of him. That would be absolutely amazing because he's been part of my life for so long. And that's one of the things that's so difficult, right? Is that, you know, when you embark on the journey of keeping animals, a lot of these animals are not going to live as long as you. Let's hope anyways, right? I mean, the life expectancy is 10 years, 15 years, maybe 20 years. Certainly, we have animals that are going to live 200 plus years that are going to one day be taken care of by my great grandchildren or something like that. But the fact is, it's just like when you get a puppy or something like that, you know there's a chance that one day you're going to lose that animal. And it sucks. And it's sometimes hard. And it makes you want to cry. It makes you defeated. It takes the wind out of your sails. There's often times when I have days like this where I want to just kind of give up. I'm like, why am I even doing this? I hate the pain of losing stuff. But at the same time, you got to think about all the joy that you've had for all the years that you actually have had the animals. The good news is, like I mentioned, that the vast majority of the animals at the Reptarium are under four years of age. And of course, we have an animal like Neil here that's only a few months old. And he can live 25 up to 40 years. So a lot of these animals are going to be around a long, long time. There are a few animals that have a little bit shorter or lifespan and we're just gonna have to deal with it and it sucks man there's I tell it whenever I lose any animal it's hard I mean it never gets easier it's never something that I ever will get used to I can tell you that much but again the thing is is that most of the animals we're working with now especially at the Reptarium are super young and again sometimes just babies still so we're gonna have these guys for a long long time there's no doubt about that and I can't wait till Neo and some of the other animals we've gotten recently will be at the Reptarium and I can see those smiling faces at the Reptarium when they meet them. I mean, look at this snake right now. I mean, it is surreal how it looks. It's incredible, and you can see it's absolutely a wonderfully placid animal. It is going to be like a Perdita. There's no doubt about it. It'll probably be one of the most popular snakes at the Reptarium for the coming years. There's no doubt about that. And the fact that it's going to stay this color is even cooler, right? So, again, as much as it sucks losing animals and knowing that some of the older animals are on their way out, so to speak, the fact is the vast majority of our animals are going to be around for a long, long time. The Sanzinia or Madagascan tree boas are doing amazing as well. And these are babies too that are going to be around for a long time. And the fact is, is that animals are going to pass away. I've said it over and over again. As long as it's not something that you've done some neglect or something like that, it's just part of the deal. And uh, again, I hope that you guys don't mind me talking about it. Let me know in the comments if you guys are okay with this. I hope that this doesn't happen very often because I can't emotionally take it to be totally honest with you. But again, Sanzinia I cannot wait till people can actually see these at the Reptarium. It's the holiday season, guys. If you're looking for some cool gifts for a reptile lover, or you're a reptile lover and want to wear a cool shirt, Reptile Army now has its new gear out. That's right, some amazing, amazing designs. And I'm just going to show you a few of them right now. There's nothing like tree monitors that are putting up Christmas tree lights. And the holiday isn't a holiday without a mom turtle reading a Christmas story to a little baby turtle. Isn't that true? How about Mrs. and Mrs. Sand Turtle Claws hanging out on a Christmas tree? This is definitely one of my all-time favorites, the snake eating a Christmas tree. How about some snakes coming out of a Christmas stocking? I'm absolutely loving this drop so far. And they always say you should never stick your tongue on a frozen pole. The same goes for a chameleon, or in this case, a frog. Have you ever thought what lizards do in the desert for Christmas? Well, yeah, now you know. And last but not least, Santa looks a little bit different. That's right, he's a chameleon. The truth is, these are only a handful of drops. We actually have more. So you can go over to reptilearmy.com, wear your swag for the holidays, be out there, be our foot soldiers, or if you know someone that wants a cool gift, this is a great gift idea. So these are gonna be available from now until Christmas. If you order them soon, make sure you order them soon so that they get there for a Christmas gift for sure. And I'll show you a few more here in the next couple days. You guys know that Lori loves Christmas, so I thought I would surprise her with a little Christmas tree. I think she's going to be so excited about it. Do you guys like this Christmas tree? The truth is, guys, we actually are going to do a full-on Christmas tree over here, but we actually want to have your ornaments on it. So P.O. Box is down below. If you have a cool reptile type of ornament or something that's really special, we would love to have all of your ornaments on our Christmas tree. So again, if you guys want to do it, P.O. Box down below, uh, send us it, and we'll, uh, we'll definitely feature all of your guys' ornaments. 
RJ's going back in the water over here. But I wanted to show you guys again, just little things make me happy. You know, it's like this area here used to have enclosures just like this. As a matter of fact, this rack is going away pretty soon too. And then this area right here, we can start putting those toad ranch cages and start having some of our overflow educational animals here and more naturalistic enclosures. We'll probably get Universal Rock to build out the backdrop so that they have climbing areas and stuff like that. So this whole area is changing from this look to kind of a more naturalistic look like a little bit like the Reptarium. But again, these are gonna be our overflow animals for educational purposes. And this entire wall eventually will do this over the next six or eight months. Of course, until the expansion, because when the expansion happens, this will all be part of the dig site where you can sift for gems, you can dig for fossils and stuff like that. But that's still a, no, that's a ways away. So right now we're trying to redo this for the educational animals. And then eventually this will be the dig site, which is gonna be absolutely incredible. And by the way, with RJ just popping on, going back in the water saying, Dad, don't muck with me. Hi, Arj, how you doing, buddy? What are you doing, boy? Of course, Arj is gonna be over at the Reptarium. I wanna take you guys on this entire exciting journey with my girl, Gemma, who is about to shed out. She went opaque a while ago. She's now clear. I'm assuming she's gonna shed here within the next day, two tops, right? And then what happens when you have a gravid female like this is that she'll shed out at about 21 to 30 days, she's gonna actually have eggs. I would think a girl this size is probably gonna have somewhere about 40, maybe even as much as 50 eggs, to be totally honest with you. Hopefully they're gonna be fertile, but I wanted to kind of update you on the progress here. Like I said, should shed any days, and then we're literally three, maybe four weeks away from collecting eggs. I wonder if she's gonna be aggressive with those eggs or she's gonna be a puppy dog. I don't know, let me know in the comments what you guys think. She went through that one little aggressive phase and now she's a puppy dog again. So I really don't know what's gonna happen, but I am over the moon excited about these eggs. You know, but they both ate. So my dad's been breeding these black-headed pythons and it is our job to see and palpitate, palpulate masculinity. Um, oh, what's, okay. I don't know. <laughs> we're gonna see if they got eggs. We're gonna palp you, we're gonna palp them and see if they got eggs. Have her? I'll go in. As you can see, he's immediately defensive. Mike, where are you at? Oh, that's her. You have to get in here. What? You got it, Mike? If you no. just grab the body, I'll feel it up. But we're gonna have to find I don't, out. I think this is him. I don't think this is her. I actually think this might be her. I think feel I can, it up, I dude. think I can feel. Dude, be just, gentle though, be gentle. Unless she's just like moving her muscles Oh my weird. God. I think I feel some stuff in there. How are we supposed to tell? Well, this is your dad's job. I know, we don't know what we're feeling for. Your dad's been breeding snakes since he was 15. Me, I've never bred a snake before. Next one. Personally, I didn't I, I didn't I feel anything. I think Mike's lying. Maybe this is the female. Okay, I don't this know. one looks a little more juicy. Ooh, this one's in a bad mood. Dude, I think I feel something there, boy. Wouldn't it be in her belly? That's the rat. What do you mean? Look, if it was ova or eggs, it would be down here. Oh, there's a little something, man. It could just be body. I think we need a professional. Verdict is we didn't get bit. No. And we didn't feel any eggs. But we also don't do this every day. So I don't really know what the heck we're doing. So. Mr. Brian! Thanks so much for joining me today. Again, I'm sorry that there was bad news today. Uh, we'll get through it. I wanted to take you guys on the journey and I really do appreciate you guys. Could you do me a couple favors? Hit a playlist if you don't mind. Also on this side, you can subscribe to this channel. Mainly inspirational, fun, upbeat stuff. Today was a little bit different, but it will go back to normal, I promise you. Have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to someone and I promise I'll see you in the next one.